Now, uh, we move on to our next panel of the day, which will address the challenges and opportunities for targeting uh, and measurement in connected TV. Um, and I know many of you will be out there wrestling with the issue in connected TV and want to explore the targeting and measurement options, as well as the best practices further. In fact, the IAB Europe released a guide earlier this year to help provide an overview of targeting and measurement capabilities currently available, as well as to share key considerations um, for the guide. So we'll pop a link to the guide into the chat box for you now, so you can have a look at it in your own time. But for now, let's move on to the, onto the panel. Uh, as we go through, please don't forget to submit your questions for the panelists using the Q&A box located at the bottom of your window. And as you see, you can see them, the moderators will be uh, surfacing those questions uh, and letting our panel discuss them as we go through. So without further ado, please welcome the moderator for this session, uh, Jessica Trainer. Jessica is the Vice President of Ad Platform Partnerships at Comscore. And over to you, Jessica. Thanks so much, Ryan. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for joining our panel session today. As Ryan mentioned, I'm Jess Trainer, Vice President Ad Platform Partnerships at Comscore, where I oversee partnerships with leading ad tech firms to increase industry adoption of Comscore's third-party targeting and measurement solutions. I'm really excited to be joined today by experts from Adform, Kantar, Samsung Ads, and Pubmatic to discuss CTV targeting and measurement. And with that, I'd like to have each of our panelists introduce themselves and tell us a little bit more about their roles. Lizzie, I'll start with you first. Good afternoon, guys. Um, I'm Lizzie Wiltshire. I'm head of client solutions at Samsung Ads in Europe. My team look after both programmatic and managed service campaigns and make sure that campaigns are set up for success at the very beginning, that they are optimized throughout the campaign. And then most importantly, and most relevantly for this panel, that we help the clients to understand how their campaigns are performed against their KPIs at the end of the campaign. Fantastic. Anya, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Jessica. And hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. My name is Anya Hofmeister, and I am in EdTech in various product roles for more than 10 years now. And in my current role at Adform as product lead, I am highly engaged in our identity and audience activation products. And I'm driving education and knowledge sharing in all areas of our business. So I'm uh, in close contact with our clients to educate people also about CTV and all the possibilities out there. Great. And Christian, I'll throw it. So hi everyone, Christian Roberts. I'm working at Kantar. I'm really focused on enhancing our media and creative measurement solutions. So obviously CTV is a small part of the media portfolio, but obviously the focus for today. So nice to meet everyone. Perfect. And last, but certainly not least, Hitesh, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Jessica, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Hitesh Bhatt. Uh, I'm Senior Director for CTV at, uh, for EMEA at Pubmatic. And in this role, I help develop our CTV strategy and then guide its execution across the different markets. So in this role, I work with our different, various different teams across the business, different markets, publishers, broadcasters, and also our buy-side partners as well. Wonderful. So I think CTV is such a buzzword right now. So I'm sure we have a lot of people tuning in for this one. And I think we can dive right in. So Hitesh, I'll throw the first question your way. Measurement is such an important piece of advertisers' marketing strategy. What do you see as the number one challenge we're facing with CTV measurement today? And how does this differ from 12 months ago? Okay, thank you for picking me first. I think the biggest challenge, this was touched on in the previous panel as well, is around kind of measurement across screens, particularly across TV and digital and CTV. I think there are lots of different solutions out there, lots of different really interesting data sets and different ways of measuring, but there isn't any kind of standardization. Everybody owns different data sets, but there isn't definitions and so on that are aligned. There also isn't any independent verification. It's businesses, it's data rather than an independent body kind of tracking and measuring stuff. So I just think that's the biggest challenge. It requires a lot more collaboration collaboration. Has there been much change in the last 12 months? I don't think so, to be honest with you, without sounding too negative. I, I think there's a greater urgency, but I just think there's more work to be done. And it's starting to happen, but I think there's a way to go. Great. Yeah. I think even at Comscore, there, there is such a challenge, like you said, across different screens, being able to truly measure that deduplication. And of course, with CTV being a multi-user um, device, you could have many people watching that. Anyone else have comments on what Hitesh mentioned there? Yeah, I would just parrot what I just said. I'm in full agreement. I think you know, it's an obvious point, but CTV's coming of age in a very different regulatory environment to digital when that came of age 15 years ago. There's so much more sensitivity around tracking um, measurement and, you know, 
because of that, are huge, you know, much more caution, and particularly at Samsung Ads, we act in a very judicious uh, and, and sensitive way when it comes to, to working within the you know, GDPR framework. And therefore, it has just proved so much more difficult to give advertisers the measurement they need whilst also protecting consumers. Absolutely. And Anya, I would be interested just from um, your standpoint, even if there's technical or, or things we're running into with CTV, that's a bit more of a challenge than maybe traditional TV. Yeah, so we definitely see great excitement uh, about CTV and its opportunities amongst our buy and sell side clients. But um, as we already heard, a lot of confusion still from terminology over tools to metrics. But the main challenge I think still is uh, to fight fragmentation and silos. And we have to do so with standards and guidelines that we set early on and collaborate with publishers, advertisers, vendors, and manufacturers together towards an open, unified, programmatic digital video buying that includes all flavors of CTV. And I think that way we can achieve some scalable targeting and measurement standards because that's the only way how we can improve user experience at the end. But there's some good standards on the way, thinking about OpenRTB with that potting. So we're really looking forward to see all those things happening. Great. No, I think you're spot on with the standardization. And that's, I think, why we've all been involved with the IAB here. And like you mentioned, even OpenRTB, these different groups that are coming together, I think a lot of companies are ready to jump in and help with that standardization. So hopefully, Hitesh, 12 months from now, we'll be saying we're actually in a better But With that, I wanted to also ask about, are we making any progress around some of these challenges that we're seeing in the industry but across the board, whether it's publishers and advertisers and measurement companies? Is anybody seeing any progress that we could point to at this? I think there are some good conversations going on to get a bit more collaboration of longer term, depending on which area of measurement we're talking about. I think when you talk about, you know, reach, frequency, that kind of area, it's slightly easier than when you talk about brand measurement, which obviously has to include some sort of form of survey. But I think it just, it will take time because I think, and I guess to add to, you know, what everyone said already, there's so much complexity we have to deal with in some ways in TV beyond just digital. We're talking about in, injecting technology into an industry that's been around for, you know, decades with, with very different behaviors and localization. So for example, when you're looking at measurement in different markets, there's different TV suppliers. So there are some that operate multi-market, the likes of Sky, Samsung will have multi-market coverage, but then there's also localization that we see. So I think, I think it will take probably more time to grapple with some of the challenges. And I think in the previous panel as well, Paul made some good points around the technology. So not only do we have different broadcasters and different providers, but there's also different technology platforms to deliver these the content. So I think, yeah, the progress is slow, but I think there's at least, I think, some traction in conversations, particularly when you look at more of the, the audience measurement side of things. Yeah. And I think when you mentioned delivery of the content, because there are so many different options and ways that this is coming through, going back to the standardization, things are being passed through programmatically and through to measurement providers in such a, a differing way based on those devices. I don't know if other people are seeing that, but yeah, I think you make a great point around that as well. Perfect. This one is near and dear to my heart around activating and targeting. And I'd like to spend a little bit of time on this and maybe Lizzie, I'll start with you with the Samsung ads perspective. I would love to know how you're tackling CTV targeting, maybe some of the good things that are happening there, but also some of the challenges that you're still seeing with CTV targeting. As an OEM, we have a, we're in a lucky position and we have a, a fairly sort of unique set of data from automatic content recognition, as well as understanding the devices that are plugged into a TV, so for example, games consoles. And that gives us a, a really sort of unique data set, which I think is, is fantastic. And obviously we help you know, our, our clients to be able to leverage that as much as possible. The challenges for, for us are much more around leveraging third-party data. So again, as I said before, Samsung approaches everything in a, in a very sort of cautious fashion. We need to make sure that we're doing everything absolutely compliantly. And so allowing advertisers to target things like demographic and purchase intent have, have, you know, are an ongoing challenge for us. Yep. Hitesh, any thoughts on your end with the targeting piece? 
Yeah, absolutely. We're looking at it in lots of different ways. So we are working with third parties to bring in third party data, so people like LiveRamp and so on. We're also developing ways in which we advertisers can bring their own data to help target against those data sets. And again, touching on the previous panel, I think content and context is probably the, the key one at the moment. So just because that's the way TV has been bought for so many years. So it's really just helping buyers of TV understand and buy in the same way as it would do on CTV. Um, I think the challenge there has been that I think it's fair to say publishers have been relatively slow in terms of pushing content data programmatically. So we've actually launched an initiative and a product quite recently called Content Object Targeting, which uses IAB standard um, definitions to allow publishers to push things like, like the show name, the genre, the language, the content length and so on. Um, all this stuff really just helps buyers drive up with demand. I think the challenge has been historically operationally for publishers, but also I think some have been reluctant to push content data because they didn't want buyers cherry picking the best shows. So what we're enabling is allowing them to develop different price floors for different shows and different content to just help alleviate that particular, particular issue. So I think right now context is probably the biggest thing we're pushing. And I'd actually love to ask you a follow-up question on that. I think it's very interesting, like you saying, helping publishers to pass genre, show different information. How have you seen it coming through? Is it, does it differ pretty widely? And to your point, is it pretty spotty as far as which publishers will provide what type of information? Yes, to both those questions, it does differ and it is pretty spotty. I think that, to be honest, many publishers are just getting stuff up and running at the moment. And I think the IAB have helped because creating the kind of standards and the definitions and the taxonomies just means there's consistency in terms of the data that the people are pushing. So. I think it's early days yet. Yeah, we're, we're, we're making a big initiative around getting publishers to start pushing this because it will drive up demand and it can help drive up pricing as well. Great. Anya, how are, what are you guys seeing over on the ad form end, similar to H Hitesh or any differences there? Um, not so much. Actually, what he describes is just one of the challenges that we're seeing, which is that most of the CTV inventory is still locked up in deals. So we don't see much open programmatic buying yet. The publishers are protecting their inventory due to lack of controls and obviously the formation contextual controls and open RTB will help hopefully as more and more of those open measurement SDK are picking up CTV aspects. The other challenge that we're seeing is the fragmentation of uh, supply and identity solutions which is a challenge that we also see with other cookie-less environments now. And it starts from finding the right audience, the frequency capping. We do partner with publishers and marketing to marketers to bridge those gaps and stitch the isolated solutions back together while still protecting the publisher's property. Got it. Great. Yeah, and I think that, like you said, a lot of the inventory is still being locked up in deals. I, I hope, my hope is that in the future, as publishers get more comfortable, and maybe that's partly as measurement continues to grow and become more enhanced, that they'll get more comfortable putting more of that inventory through the open exchange for programmatic targeting. But Hitesh, to your point, I think we still have several challenges just from a perspective of if each publisher is providing different information, it does cause a challenge, even for contextual-based targeting, which I know on the Comscore end, we've been talking a lot about contextual, of course, with all of the privacy regulations that have ha been happening. And Lizzie, you guys are definitely lucky, as you mentioned, to be having that a ACR tech and being directly um, in line and getting some of that information. So thank you guys for sharing around targeting. And I think we had a little bit of more of a positive spin on targeting that we had uh, on measurement. So hopefully we keep seeing measurement pulling us in that direction. Okay, great. The other question I wanted to ask you guys. So it's no surprise that lockdowns have accelerated the growth of CTV consumption across households. In fact, in the document that the IAB just released, they noted that across the EU5 markets between January 2020 and May 2021, traditional TV viewing rose only about 17%, whereas CTV consumption increased by 55%. So huge different as, difference as far as the increase. What I would want to know is, has this advance, advancement in consumption of CTV, has this helped the measurement conversation? So maybe we still have challenges, but have you started to see more bodies coming to, to light or started having more conversations? And maybe, Christiane, I could throw that one to you to hear a little bit from your perspective. Yeah, sure. I think it's it was interesting. We did a lot of research as well from Kanta's perspective in terms of how 
the pandemic and the various lockdowns impacted behaviors globally. And I think the growth of CTV viewing and TV viewing in general obviously opened up some great opportunities for advertisers. And I think from a measurement perspective, one of the challenges we've had, depending on the form of measurement we're looking at, particularly for the brand measurement, one of the biggest challenges was that CTV reach was relatively slow, 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 sorry, relatively small versus the traditional linear TV. And so when your reach is small, and you need surveys to understand attitudes, then you're talking about much smaller pools of people you can interview. So I think the growth of CTV will definitely enable more measurement solutions as we move into the future. I think it is important, though, to understand that all of these changes in behaviours across the pandemic are still moving today. I think we're seeing the recent news that Netflix subscriptions are down because people are cutting back with the cost of living crisis in the UK. And I think as we move out of the pandemic and people kind of adapt to the new kind of ways of living, maybe slightly more working from home and balanced commuting lifestyles, I think we'll continue to see the shift in behaviours so that I think it's very important for advertisers to understand for their brand how their consumers are, you know, consuming their media and the time they're spending and the programmes they're watching and things like that to help inform those conversations that they have with media agencies around which CTV channels are maybe the most appropriate and how they're, and then we can look at what the measurement of those are because i think there's a range of measurement solutions that are available obviously that kind of the golden chalice that we want of that complete cross measurement of everything with audience through to brand is not really achievable in in the the form that we have there's always going to be some kind of some something that you can't quite do but i think that there's always going to be something depending on what the client's question is and what they're trying to achieve out of the measurement which i think is the key piece Yeah. I love that you brought up the point of more eyeballs watching CTV, like the survey example you gave, that is ultimately going to help measurement if you have more people there. That's a wonderful point. And Lizzie would love to hear from the Samsung ads perspective. You guys, I'm sure are seeing continued increase in in viewership, but would love just your perspective on the pandemic and increased CTV consumption is potentially impacting measurement or the conversation. Yeah. I'm going to repeat what Hitesh said. As more and more people are watching TV outside of traditional linear, the, the challenge around measurement becomes more pressing. And the positive thing, as, as Christiane said, is that then leads us to be able to do more effective measurement, especially when it comes to things like brand, getting greater crossover with panels, it becomes an awful lot easier. We are also seeing you know, the, the same trends as, as Christiane mentioned. So obviously you know, a, a move into, into streaming and, and CTV consumption, the cost of living crisis and the impact that that's having on, on the landscape. And I think we need to accept that it's going to constantly evolve. We've been working with Ipsos and we did some research, which you know, essentially backed up that, that idea. Just over 60% of respondents that we saw said they'd be willing to watch ads on TV in exchange for free content, given the rise of streaming costs. And I think that is just going to grow. So I think that we need to keep up, keep our eyes open. And, and to Christian's point, it's, you know, it's important that advertisers keep, keep searching and keep learning out where to find the audience that they're looking for. Yep, definitely. Anya, anything to add there just from the ad form perspective? I think more a general note that I think our industry is very good at adopting a change and and responding quickly to the markets. And so we can learn from other areas where we have to like the third party cookie deprecation or GDPR. And I think that's what uh, makes our industry so fascinating for all of us. And I'm very positive that we can uh, also tackle the CTV measurement challenge. (laughs) Yes, no, I agree with you. I think that we continue to come up against different challenges, right? Whether it is privacy regulations or new channels like CTV, but to your point, the industry is able to rally and get people behind it and smart people that want to solve and figure out new, new ways of doing things. And that's probably why we're all in this industry because it's ever evolving and changing, uh, which makes it exciting. Great. So with that, wanted to talk a little bit about that there's various solutions that are being developed to meet the demands of buyers and advertisers for cross-media measurement and helping to ensure campaign reach and frequency across TV and digital. Have you guys seen that any of these have been effective to date? I'll throw that out to, to anybody that if there's any anything you've seen around that the cross measurement and reach and frequency and and helping advertisers there. I think from a, from a Cantor perspective, we've done, we've got a number of different solutions that we've operated in in various markets. And I think 
the market difference and the different providers that come in and I guess the different legislations and the, the measurement techniques that are available do vary quite a bit, which is part of the challenge when it comes to CTV within the broader scope of a, a, a larger media plan. I think there's definitely options that are available. I think the challenge that we often have with advertisers is the scalability of that. We ran a study in France that looked at cross-media measurement across TV. We used ACR technologies, various providers to deliver and look at how your the impact of that advertising had synergies between digital and TV and, and multimedia. I think the reality is that a lot of a lot of advertisers would really like to have that technical understanding from those kind of panels and the ACR technology. I think but it becomes expensive to scale. And so it's always one of those things where I think historically we've done these one-off studies in different markets and you test, the, you test the concept, it works, but realistically is that scalable globally and are advertisers willing to invest in that? And I think that's often where the barriers have become. So I think we often find that our advertisers are quite like some of the other methods we have. The opportunity to see methods where we ask questions around their consumption behaviors and we try and map that to media like delivery data from the likes of Samsung or other providers to get more of a modeled approach to that. And I think often those kind of methods which are more scalable and slightly more responsive to the differences we have in different markets the biggest challenge has historically often been the reach of that that ctv activity so i, I think that as we said previously maybe the reach and the the consumption increasing for ctv might help us to develop some of those methods a bit more yep definitely and hitash would love to hear from your perspective i'm sure you're working or seeing different providers coming in and out so would love to hear if you've um, yeah, seen anything that's been effective or any anecdotes you can share there? Yeah, sure. There are a lot of different point solutions, right, that can measure cross-screen reach and frequency. Um, and in themselves, they all work really well. ACR data is fantastic to, to track what's being viewed on the screen. Different methodologies, if, if you look at the broadcasters in the UK, they've created C-Flight, which measures linear and then broadcaster VOD. So there's some really innovative ways of measuring this. I think the what the key to all of these is measuring it against the kind of the standard industry standards. So in the UK, that would be BARB. So allowing new measurement tech to measure against existing um, models and panels. I think it will happen. You know, I think that there are some challenges. I, I don't want this panel to appear quite challenged, <laughs> should we say, because this is early days yet. I think we're at a tipping point. You know, if you look at the, the large streaming services available now, the ones that are coming along quite soon, you have Discovery Plus right now, you've got kind of Paramount plus Warner Brothers, HBO, Netflix, potentially in the future. I think that scale will really help. And I think that will drive advertisers to push um, more and more for kind of standardization and for people just to work together. I, I think what's benefited other sectors of the media is joint industry committees. So JICs, independent bodies that can pull together all the data sets, verify it and effectively give it a seal of approval. So I think that will happen. And in, I think 12 months time, it will be a different situation, but yeah, I think there are lots of different solutions that work really well. I just think the best combination will be having a bit of everything. Yep. Anya, did you have anything to add there? Maybe only that we're from at home watching the WFA cross media measurement initiative quite closely because that could really be a game changer if all the privacy scale and integration uh, concerns are addressed, but still remains to be seen if we can overcome their the technical and political and collaborative obstacles. Yep. Yeah. I think Comscore also with the WFA, that's something that we're working closely with that team. And like we were talking about these industry bodies coming in and helping to get us all moving the ship in the right direction. Yeah. That's fantastic. This more of a easy question, but I think it's good to talk about just KPIs. So what have you been hearing from buyers and advertisers? What are their KPIs when they're thinking about CTV measurement? I know we talked about reach and frequency, but what other things are they asking for or are you being, yeah, being asked for from buyers? I think business outcomes. So uh, alongside reach and frequency, there's a whole range of advertisers that CTV opens up, direct to consumer, just more DR, performance brands. And I think the, the fact that CTV combines traditional TV with the strengths of digital means that there's more, more ability to measure attribution and results and business outcomes. So I think that's a real kind of positive for this area in terms of driving whole new areas of advertisers that perhaps didn't use linear TV or couldn't afford to, that can now be spending money in a different way and measuring the results in, in a more definitive way. So I think that there are various businesses that are supporting that. And I think that, that will drive a lot of the growth, certainly while the reach of frequency is being worked on. Great. And Christiane, I know you mentioned some of your surveys. What 
kind of key questions are advertisers looking to understand with that? Yeah, and it's, it's really been a range. And I think the key thing was probably in your question in terms of the KPIs. So what KPIs are the clients, you know, looking? So I think we've always advised clients when, if you're going to ask your media agency to implement CTV, then give, make sure you're clear on what the objectives are. Is it, are you try, aiming to drive reach with that activity or are you aiming to target specific um, consumers? Are you trying to drive different messaging? And depending on what their objectives are for the media, then we design the research methodologies around the best way to get to that. So we do arrange for that reach and frequency and helping them understand where they're managing to target certain consumers, whether they're getting overlap and synergies between different media types and, and really help helping to drive their objectives and then through to more of the brand and outcome elements. So things like, is it raising brand awareness? Are you um, managing to drive some of those key messages that you're trying to differentiate your brand with? And then obviously there's bigger kind of, you can do modeling that looks at more of the long-term outcomes and your branding impact. So it's really a really broad spectrum and often what we challenge our advertisers on is to really get down to what are the objectives you're giving your suppliers and your media agency so that we can help understand, help you understand whether you're achieving those. Yep. Lizzie, I think you might have, we're going to maybe jump in, so I'll hand it over to you. No, absolutely. I think that the KPIs that we are typically being asked for are those where we can provide a unique view, and that's fundamentally how it differs from digital. Um, things like for video games publishers, we can help them understand Lyft for exposed play versus unexposed play, which is a fairly unique perspective. Incremental reach is something that non-media and entertainment brands come to us a lot. They want to be able to reach those that haven't been exposed to their linear ads, and we can build an audience and, and of linear ad exposed and then suppress those from our targeting. And so depending upon the advertiser, as Christian said, and what their KPIs are, those are the kind of the key KPIs that we're, we're the advertisers are coming to Samsung ads to be able to meet, which are sort of different to those that they'll be able to get from a digital campaign. Yep. Incremental reach. I, I love that metric. And I think that is something that a lot of buyers are asking about. If they're moving into CTV, what does that mean compared to linear? Because oftentimes, rather than comparing CTV to desktop exposure or mobile, they're comparing it to linear exposure and wanting to understand, is there a unique audience that I can find streaming that I'm not going to reach with linear. Yeah, I think that one's going to continue to be a key metric that we'll hear about. Of course, until we get to the point where TV linear and CTV have completely blended and we're no longer talking about them as separate um, silos. Any success stories, and Lizzie, maybe you touched on this a little bit, but any success stories that you can share just that you've um, seen with some of your, some of the brands you've worked with for CTV? Yeah, you know, I'll go back to a linear reach um, extension campaign we ran. So Vodafone ran a campaign with us. They wanted to encourage consumers to switch um, their broadband supplier. They had achieved a really strong reach amongst the heaviest linear consumers around 90, over 90%, but was really struggling with get, reaching those um, cord cutters, the, the, the non-linear and the light linear uh, viewers. So as I mentioned earlier, we are able to create a dynamic audience of people that we know have been exposed to the linear ad. And then we can exclude that from our campaign. On top of that, which was a bonus, is that we're also able to layer our NACR data. So in this instance, we layered on um, people who we knew were heavy streamers and people who we knew um, were gamers and therefore had um, the greatest likelihood of wanting to be able to get faster broadband speed. So in terms of results, we got, I think it was just over about a 12% um, incremental reach across the Samsung campaign which was equated to around was over 300,000 additional households. And also, which is great for the advertiser, we saw a really strong um, video completion rate, again, over 90%. Um, the inc and I guess on top of that, the bonus was that um, the inc that incremental reach was amongst people that would otherwise be really hard to reach with a linear campaign. So again, amongst those light linear and those cord cutter audiences. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. I think it's good to hear some of the, the good things that are happening out there. So that's wonderful. One other question wanted to hear from you guys are with your buyers and advertisers you're working with, and maybe even for Anya and Hitesh from your angle, are any still hesitant to move into CTV at this point? Or is that last year? Are we, have we break it, broke down those barriers and most are ready to put CTV on their plan as a mainstay and something they're looking to really dive into at this point? I think they are 
not hesitant they're still testing not all of mm -hmm. them i think there are some agencies of brands which are more progressive and more advanced in this rare area i think everybody knows they're going to be spending in this space that's the thing i think they're just figuring, figuring out what the best approach is working out how what their objectives are going to be how they're going to measure it so i think there's a strong desire i think there's a kind of we're at the tail end of a test and learn phase and i think the tipping point is very soon where we'll start just seeing more and more uh, entering this world Fantastic. Great. Anya, similar on your end? Very similar. Not every advertiser is an innovator or has the uh, resources to do this testing early on. Uh, but we see more and more people reaching out and are willing to do those tests. And yeah, it's a, an exciting area. Yep. Great. Okay. And then would love to hear from all of you on this. What do you guys find most exciting about working in the CTV measurement space? And anybody can start with this one. I think there's a lot of things, but yeah, we'd love to know just what motivates you and, and what you're looking forward to. I can go first if you want. I think for me, it, it's like the constant change. I do really like the it always there's always something different that comes up and i think even the recent discussions that are coming about netflix potentially delivering ads in platform and i think there's just there's so much change but which i think is can be daunting and threatening when you think about it's just another challenge from a measurement perspective but i think it's those challenges that really make it interesting and i think it's one of the things that i like working in these industries is that there's you know always something different that you can and a new challenge yeah, for me, I've spent half my career working in traditional TV, half in digital. So I'm, I'm delighted that there's an area that combines both of those and makes me still relevant. I, I think that, I mean, I think TV is the most powerful ad medium and I think CTV will be transformative and we're at the early stages of that. And I think that's very exciting. And ultimately we'll just continue to allow great content to be funded, which I think is you know, vital. Fantastic. Anya? Yeah, I think we're in an excellent position right now with the proven tools and capabilities we have from digital video and programmatic buying combined with the experience from linear TV and measurement, bringing this all together, the most exciting screen in the house. And yeah, I think it's fantastic to be part of the industry that will shape a new fun TV user experience. Great. And Lizzie, I'll hand it over to you. I agree with everything that's been said for me. On top of that, I think it's the unique data sources. So getting that really holistic view across smart TV usage, be it with gaming or health apps, as well as you know, OTT and linear, I think the, the unique position, the neat, unique data sources are super interesting. And I guess also I feel like the, the smart TV is really solidifying itself at the heart of, of the home. And as we see the usage expand, we'll also see the data available expand. And I think that's really exciting. Fantastic. Yeah, I think I'm excited about just more standardization like we talked about. I think that CTV, there's such an opportunity. And as we were mentioning, advertisers are ready to start using it. Yes, there's still testing that has to happen, but I truly think next year, most advertisers are going to have this as part of a mainstay on their plan. And we are going to start getting more standardization from the publishers who are producing this fantastic content that's going to allow everything to, to work a bit more smoothly. It's just a learning curve. We've got, we, this hasn't been a standard that we've needed. So it's going to take some time to have all of these, all the pipes built and everything flowing in, in a standard format. We did actually get a, a question from the audience. So I wanted to throw this one out. And if anybody has thoughts, you can definitely uh, speak up. So do you see advertisers setting up a CPA-based KPI campaign on CTV? And Lizzie, I think your example gave a little bit around that, right? For maybe not necessarily acquisition, but yes, growing that group. But any other thoughts on CPA as a, a KPI with a CTV campaign? I think from our perspective, um... Possibly not. We are working on making, on helping advertisers with, rather than cost CPA or CPV, making kind of guarantees, I suppose, or to help advertisers feel confident with perhaps reach or so that we can make sure that average you know, cost per um, viewability or cost per view doesn't slip below a certain CPM. And so we are perhaps going to put in some to measurement around that, but I think from Samsung's perspective, probably not as a, as a publisher, as an OEM. Yep. 
I actually think you brought up a great point around CPMs and it's not even anything we touched on at all in this panel around cost of CTV compared to traditional digital. How has that impacted advertisers even through Hitesh, like from a pubmatic perspective or from any of your perspective? Do you think that's also a bit of the hesitation of, wow, I'm going to be paying a bit extra and I haven't proven out that this channel is going to have the impact I, I've needed? Do you guys think that's part of the hesitation or not as much? I don't think price is, uh, is well, depends what the price is. Typically what we're seeing, I don't think that's become, that's a huge barrier for brands entering this space. I think the measurement, particularly if we're talking about CPA, it is possible if you're looking at digital acquisition, there are businesses that can measure kind of exposure to the commercial on the TV and then look at whether they people went to a particular site or bought per purchase a product or downloaded an app. That capability is there. There are brands who are using it. And I think that area will continue to grow. Fantastic. Um, any final thoughts? I think going through this panel with you guys, I think that, yes, we started out a little bit on the negative side, talking through all the challenges, but I hopefully the audience is getting that there's a lot of positivity and there's a lot of opportunity still left to be had with CTV. We're still a bit in the early days, which is funny to say, because I know it's been around for a while, but we're still in the early days. And I think that also just seeing different companies collaborating, it's only a matter of time before we're in a really great spot with CTV and there's always going to be challenges, but I think we're all here and, and ready to tackle it. I wanted to thank you guys all for joining. And I think Ryan from the IEB will be popping back in, in a moment here. Hi, Ryan. Hey, Jess. Thanks very much for that guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for a great panel discussion and uh, sharing all your insights uh, and how you see the measurement opportunity for connected TV continually evolving. Are we doing a Q and A now or are we moving on? I think we're ready. I was looking for questions, so I think we're good to move on. Okay, great. Nice one. Thank you very much guys. Yeah. Just Thanks as a so reminder. Much. Then guys, there's, a, there's the IB Europe's Guide to Connected TV and targeting a measurement that uh, is available on the IB 